Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video, we're going to be looking at migrating Cloud Foundry applications to IBM Cloud Code Engine. Now for this video, I've asked for help from two real experts. Uh, first of all, Uwe Fasnacht, who's the Product Director for IBM Cloud Code Engine, and Simon Moser, who's an IBM Cloud Code Engine Lead Architect. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Uwe. First of all, one thing just to, to want to be very clear on this, um, because this is sort of being misunderstood a lot, Code Engine is not a one-to-one -one replacement for Cloud Foundry. It is a different multi-tenant platform with different trade-offs built on a different technology stack, which we'll talk about later on. It is only one of the possible migration targets. The other ones, of course, are our other strategic one-time environments in the IBM Cloud, which is the IBM Kubernetes Service, IKS, or, or of course, OpenShift on IBM Cloud, right? You think about sort of our runtime environment strategy in the IBM Cloud going forward, there are two strategic platforms, OpenShift or IKS, if you want sort of a single tenant experience, or if you want a multi-tenant experience, it's IBM Cloud Code Engine. Those are the strategic choices going forward. Now, what are the differences and how do customers or you might want to make that trade off? One of them is you might have security dictate cluster level isolation, meaning that your applications are not allowed to run on the same container, Kubernetes clusters, as a different application. And in that case, Code Engine as it stands today is not for you. Code Engine, just like Cloud Foundry, is a multi-tenant environment where workloads run on the same container environment, right? Within, um, separated by namespaces, but within one cluster. Costing and pricing is also quite different between the two environments. If you're used to Cloud Foundry, you're used to sort of paying by the drink, right? For the resources that you actually use. And Code Engine does the same thing, right? You're only paying for when your workloads run. You're paying for gigabyte seconds as you're, you know, as you're used to in Cloud Foundry. You're also paying for vCPU seconds. It's very similar. Differently from Cloud Foundry, Code Engine allows scale to zero, right? So we can put sort of your applications to sleep while they're not being active. And we'll talk about that uh, later on, that that is quite a cost, cost effective way of running things. Now, on the other side, if you have your own cluster, IKS or OpenShift, of course, you're paying for that cluster for the whole time while that cluster is there. Whether you're fully loading that cluster with applications or whether you only have a single app running on it. Okay, So it's a constant billing for the complete cluster. It's not pay for only what you use for. And of course, on the management side, you sort of have to go down one level deeper and if you're using um, OpenShift or IKS, you sort of have to have some skills around that, networking, right? You sort of have to understand how that works, how weird things like ingress and egress controllers and nodes and things like that. While running on Code Engine, very similar to Cloud Foundry, right? We're isolating you from all that stuff. You're basically taking your source code, you're giving it to the platform to be run. Okay, next slide. And that is very much what we've built Code Engine around, right? Run any code. And we'll talk a little bit more about what any code means because it's quite different than Cloud Foundry. The options of what you can run on Code Engine are much larger. At scale, right, scales up and down. You use that from Cloud Foundry and you only pay for what you use. Next slide. As I've said earlier, um, Code Engine is uh, running applications on Code Engine is sort of only one development style, right? Um, to run applications where you're pushing from source code. Um, that's what we're going to be focusing today um, and, and that that's what we're doing in the demo today. That's all we're going to be showing today. With this slide, I wanted to sort of get across that Code Engine is much broader than Cloud Foundry is, right? It allows your hand containers over to the platform. So if you know how to build your own containers, you can do that. It allows you to run batch jobs massively, parallel batch jobs on the platform run to completion workloads and it allows you to run you know functions as a service that you 
might be running in IBM Cloud Functions today, right? So this sort of classic serverless experience. So it's a, it's a very broad platform. That's why it's our strategic platform going forward that supports a wide variety of workloads and not just what we're going to be showing you here today because today's talk really is zooming in on that developer who has source code and who's coming from sort of a PaaS Cloud Foundry experience. And then one more slide to sort of drive that point home how this is a very different technology stack that we've built this on before we then hand over to Simon for the demo. Um, we've built this on a very modern technology stack. Um, of course, physical and virtual machines in our data centers. Code Engine is available in all data centers and all MZRs around the world, unlike Cloud Foundry. And what you can imagine here is that Simon and the team in every single one of these MZRs have sort of built up a gigantic Kubernetes cluster. And we're using a technology, an open source technology called Knative to actually take workloads and deploy them onto that cluster to manage these workloads, to scale them in, scale them out. We're using another modern open source technology called Istio as our service mesh, allows us to do communication with the end user, allows us to do you know, uh, canary deployments, green blue deployments, that sort of thing. And of course, we are, we are giving you an option to not just sort of run containers or containerized batch jobs via Knative, um, but we're also giving you an option inside of Code Engine to sort of packetize your source code into a container, which we'll be showing today, right? So as a developer, you can bring a, a source code like a function or an application and in that case, we'll see, hey, this is not containerized yet. We'll have to containerize it for you first before we hand it over to Knative and run on this gigantic Kubernetes cluster. Um, and we're using open source technologies that you might be familiar from with Cloud Foundry, Paketo build packs or Shipwright or Tekton for our pipeline. Um, so as a developer on the left-hand side, you can sort of give different types of artifacts to the platform, containers, batch jobs, source code, right? Depending on how much control you want, you know, in a control, running a container, of course, you have much more control than running source code. Okay, but as I said today, we're, we're going to be demoing very narrowly the Cloud Foundry um, use case. And so before we talk more, I think it's demo time. Um, you're probably all familiar with Cloud Foundry push. What Simon is going to be showing here is sort of the equivalent code engine push. I'm, oh, so hello everybody. So my name is Simon, and I'm actually going to show you both because I'm going to put it side by side and, and just make sure that you understand uh, where we're heading. I would like to show you a little bit of um, um, do one use case that you might be familiar with as, as an existing Cloud Foundry customer, and show you how you can do that in uh, in Code Engine. So I'm, I'm going to stick with a very simple to understand kind of hello world scenario, and then I'm going to walk you through through all the details in a second step, for example, like what if you want to use custom domains, et cetera, et cetera. But in order to make sure that I'm not cheating, what I'm going to do, the, the very first thing is I am going to create a new code engine project, right? Um, a code engine project coming from Cloud Foundry is similar to a code, like to a Cloud Foundry um, org or a Cloud Foundry space. So it is a content, well, it is an entity that holds your resources. Right, um, that holds your resources and holds your applications, for example. Um, and I'm going to create one called Blueprint, uh, capital blue. Blueprint. I'm going to create one called Blueprint. I'm going to create that in Frankfurt um, because I have set up my entire demo scenario um, before that. And I'm going to use the resource group default uh, in order to create that project. Um, Resource group default is, is the first thing where things are a little bit different. So, so Code Engine is entirely built on IAM um, as it is today, whereas, as you know, in Cloud Foundry, we are still working on, um, or we were still working on a technology called UAA, which had an integration with IAM, but you could not use IAM to do your rights management. You could not use IAM to do, uh, you know, the, the IBM Cloud preferred way of assigning permission roles and these sort of things. So now I created this thing called Blueprint, uh, which is a new project located in Frankfurt. And um, I'm going to now flip over to the console in my second step, and I'm going to show you um, two things. So let me clear this out quickly. Um, 
what have I done here, right? So the first thing that I have done, as you can see, is I have um, I'm I'm sitting in a in a, in a directory here, which is an application called Dora, and Dora is a very um, very famous uh, application in the Cloud Foundry world. It's a simple hello world that just spits out and says, "Hi, I'm Dora." Um, it came originally from the Diego migration. For those who are still who have been around with us for that long a time, that they remember that. Even Cloud Foundry some years back was uh, running on a different container runtime, which was called DEAs. And at one point in time, we migrated to a, a container technology called Diego. Um, and that's, just, that's the one that's still used up to this day. So um, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is um, in order to be able, and I'm going to do the same thing here, right? I'm going to show you I'm in the same directory. Um, because I just created a new project called Blueprint, um, what I have to do is I have to select that uh, in order to make sure that it's it's working, right? Uh, IBM Cloud select, oh, IBM Cloud CE project select minus minus name blueprint. Because that is the one that I was about to show. Something like that. And do another clear here as well, just to make sure that I have it. Everything done. All right. Okay. So right hand side, I'm stick. I'm sticking with uh, with uh, Code Engine. Left hand side, I'm sticking with um, uh, Cloud Foundry. So what am I going to do next? Is in the left window, I'm going to do something that everybody of you has probably done, which is I'm going to push the code in my uh, in into Cloud Foundry, IBM Cloud CF Push Dora. In the right hand side, on the right hand side, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, in the code engine paradigm, right? So same command, I'm going to start with, well, I'm actually going to kick them off at the same time so you can, you can see it, the race that's happening here. So this one is IBM Cloud CF Push Dora, right? And it's just going to do the invocation. Oops. Oh, hold on before I do this. Uh, okay, I'm going to do another name. My Dora, my Dora, one, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm going to kick off the one here on the side as well, right? Did it work? Okay, okay. Now you can actually see things happening at the same time, right? So on the left-hand side, I'm pushing my little Dora application um, into the into the cloud. On the right-hand side, I'm pushing the same application. I'm push, pushing the same code on both sides. Um, and, and I'm going to push it into, into Code Engine on the left-hand side. Uh, sorry, on the right-hand side, I'm going to push it into Cloud Foundry on the left-hand side. Um, and again, very simplistic. Um, so you see left-hand side is a bit more verbose at the moment. So it's basically to telling you what it is it's doing, that it's building the source code, creating the container out of it, um, and, and running it. On the right-hand side, um, I started a little later. Um, uh, it also did a build, as you can see here, build run status running. Uh, the build completed successfully. It's now pushing the application, and it's just waiting for the application to become ready, which should be there in a second. I get a URL here, which is called mydar1234, and I can curl that URL, right? And it will respond. It will say, hey, I'm Dora. And um, that is uh, the Cloud Foundry, the Cloud Foundry way of, of doing it. And OK, all done. Right hand side is almost ready as well. Right. And I got a different URL, which is in this call, call which is in this case called Dora.something, and I can curl this as well. And surprisingly, I get the very same result. So you can see from a developer experience, from an ease of use point of view. I did the same thing uh, in Cloud Foundry, and I did the same thing in uh, Code Engine. Um, slightly different syntax that I used, but the the developer experience was very very similar to accomplish uh, the same um, to the same thing that I was trying to do. Right. So now um, what I can do uh, uh, just to go beyond what we can do in Cloud Foundry. So let me do. Um, um, let me do a little bit of editing, right? So you can see here, this is the file that I'm pushing. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to change uh, my, I'm going to change my application. I'm going to say, instead of hello Dora, I'm going to, oops, sorry. Uh, that was my mistake. 
Um, I'm just going to change my, my code. Right? And I'm going to say, hey, I'm Hello Blueprint. It's oops, uh, um, Hello Blueprint instead of Hello Dora. And I'm going to now do a different operation, which is I will um, update my uh, application, right? I'm going to do instead of put instead of pushing it. Hold on. This code up here yeah. is I could do a CF uh, CE update on on the same application, and what it would have done is it would have created a second version of that application. I'm going to show that um, slightly different in a second again. So the, um, the the container image is now something that you can access, which I think is a good thing, um, to be honest, because some people like to work more with container images, uh, and, and some businesses even require to work more with container images. But in Cloud Foundry, it was kind of hard to get the container image out of the running application in the past, whereas right now, it's it's not in your face because if I wouldn't have to clean up my quota here, you wouldn't have seen that I had to do a container image update. Um, but if I really wanted it, if I want to access my container image, then um, I can have it. I can just go to my container registry, right? Um, as you can see here, and if I refresh it now, you should see that there's probably a new image that has been created by now. Oops, I got to go back to Frankfurt. Um, and I have a, exactly, you see actually two minutes, two minutes, two images created, one called Dora Source and the other one called App Dora. Um, and again, now if I go back, uh, okay, you can see there's a new, there's my URL for the application is, um, is the same. And surprisingly, if I curl it, I'm going to get a hi, I'm a blueprint or hi, I'm blueprint instead of hi, I'm Dora. Now, what does that mean if I go back to my code engine project, right? So let me go into my code engine project and let me click on the applications tab and there is my DAW application that I just showed you. And you can actually see that I have two revisions, right? I have revision one, which is the one that I just had. And I have revision two, which is a new one that I just, that I just created. And, um, Right now, you can see here, for example, that all of the traffic, so every time I curl this application, all of the traffic goes over to, um, goes over to, to the new one, and the old one is basically going down. That means, um, um, and you can actually see it here, even if you push a new revision, if you push a new version of the application, Code Engine will make sure that you have no downtime. And let me demonstrate this actually visually so you understand it. So what I can go here is I can say, okay, I'm going to create a new revision. And, and what I'm going to change is not the code itself this time. I'm going to change the number of instances, right? I'm going to say, okay, this app is now allowed to scale to zero, right? And I can uh, click a save and create. And you can see here the UI, it's now deploying, right? Uh, this new revision that I'm just about to create is, is about to deploy. While that is happening, my old application, Dora 002, is still there and is surfing 100% of the traffic, right? So I can I could go here and I could still curl and it would still answer with, hi, I'm Blueprint. Um, when the new one becomes ready, so i going to wait a second. When the new one becomes ready, you can actually see that in this graph up here, there will be a new second revision coming online, right? While the first one is still there, right? So I'm gonna wait a little second. Um, while the first one is still there, now I have three revisions, right? You can see it. So now two applications are active, replication two and application revision, like version two and version three of my gra of my application are active. And um, application three is taking all the load right now, right? Which is exactly how I have configured it. I want the new application to take the load, but there was no downtime. There was no, no nothing. And this will now keep on going for like, you know, a minute or two, right? Um, um, until that old application will then basically scale down. And because I have now changed application three or version three also to scale down to zero, eventually they will both scale down um, entirely. Okay, 
Um, I think that is kind of like what I wanted to show you, um, you know, where code engine applications just go above and beyond what you could do in, with Cloud Foundry applications. You can accomplish similar things like that, you could, but it was mu much more manual work that you had to do in order to get a, a, a downtime free blue-green deployment kind of thing. All these kind of cool features are, are built into, into code engine. Um, all right, okay, so with that being said, I will go back and I'll go back to the presentation and keep on talking about the next couple of things. So, okay, so um, the, just to put it again in, in one command, from a syntax perspective, what I showed is IBM CF, IBM Cloud CF push Dora minus P dot, which means push the directory that I'm currently uh, located here from a CLI perspective, is now replaced by a command that's called IBM Cloud C app create minus minus name Dora minus minus source dot. It's a little bit more complicated. There are multiple reasons for why we did not create a CE push command, although that would have been technically possible. But um, it is the same thing uh, that you could do here um, with the same singular command, and, and it feels very natural from a Cloud Foundry perspective, uh, from a Cloud Foundry user perspective. I, I hope you agree to that. Uh, just a random positive comment um, that was uh, given by some colleague of ours who. Um, who was doing an app migration um, from Cloud Foundry to Code Engine, um, and he said, for someone like me who knows next to nothing about containers, being able to migrate Cloud Foundry apps to Code Engine with just the source code is magical. I learn containers when I have time, but this capability is fantastic. And I think you just saw that um, uh, the demo went uh, very smooth. Um, in, uh, if I wouldn't have had these problems with the with my quota on my on my container registry. Um, and I think that's the experience that we want everybody else to have. So let's dig a little bit deeper in you know the, the depths of Cloud Foundry versus Code Engine, and, and you know what are the things to watch out for. So the first um, slide that we're showing here, the first slide that I'm showing here is um, you know I think in the blueprint, like in this channel, someone asked is, hey, why are we sunsetting? Why are we sunsetting Cloud Foundry? Because it's a proven open source technology and, and so on and so forth. So there's a multiplicity of reasons for that. First one, the technology stack that Cloud Foundry is running on is, is getting a little dated, right? It's still working on, it's still running on VMs. Um, it uses a, a, an orchestrator called Bosch. Um, um, it is um, very resource heavy and therefore very cost extensive to run. Um, and all of these things um, are not getting addressed um, anymore uh, properly by the, by the Cloud Foundry community because the Cloud Foundry community in itself is also a little bit on the, down, on the downfall, right? So with Code Engine, we have an equally appealing open source solution because everything that you saw or most of the things that you saw is actually built on open source tech. Right? So it's not like uh, a, a code engine is a closed source um, project or anything like that. It's actually a very open project because all of the building blocks in code engine are coming from the open source communities. It's just that we are putting them together uh, inside of IBM versus in Cloud Foundry. The idea was that the community puts them together as a coherent platform, but that trend has kind of left the station in the wrong direction. Right? So when you look at it from a, from a you know, ability um, to run completion batch shop um, um, perspective, you could see that um, um, in Cloud Foundry, you could do something like that. There was this concept of um, Cloud Foundry tasks, right? Um, but in, in, in Code Engine, you actually have the, the full programming model where you can say, hey, I have an application that wants to spawn a run to completion batch ability. Everything is built in. Everything is behind a single programming interface. So it's really nice, right? Um, how about service meshes, right? Cloud Foundry had a had a, some sort of a service mesh that allowed you basically to do container to container networking, but it did not allow you to do any sort of traffic shaping or these alike. That is something that we have fixed in Code Engine, where we have basically full networking, full security, discovery, traffic management, um, um, or at least the enablement of all of that already there. Can you do triggering or eventing? Right in Cloud Foundry, you could you had to build it as a as an add-on by yourself. Um, in Code Engine, that is already built in. 
right? Can you do scale to zero, meaning if your application does not receive any kind of requests and it should scale down and get stopped and then whenever a new request comes in, it wakes up and, and serves that request again? Not possible in Cloud Foundry. Where is it available? Um, Cloud Foundry available in five regional geographies, two twice in the US, twice in Europe, and one time in Sydney. Um, Code Engine is, as of today, available in all nine major MCRs of IBM Cloud. So um, you could um, even, as a as someone in um, uh, you know Tokyo um, or someone in South America, you have options um, to run your Code Engine localized uh, in your in your local cloud MCR. Compliance perspective. Um, Cloud Foundry Public basically had ISO and SOC 2 compliances. Um, Code Engine, as of today, already has ISO, SOC 2, and FS Cloud compliances, um, which allows uh, which allows to address different types of workloads there. Um, and there are more to come. Right? There are more to come. Um, it's built on the VPC Gen 2 um, infrastructure um, base um, underneath our Kubernetes stack. And uh, because of that, we have actually quite some interesting uh, advantages when it comes to some of these compliance postures like FS Cloud and, and, and potentially FedRAM and whatever is on the horizon. Um, and then last but not least, um, cost, right? Is cost prohibitive? Um, Cloud Foundry is, uh, uh, has been clocking in at s seven cents per gigabyte hour, right? Um, and Code Engine is usually, is, is cheaper essentially, right? It, it comes in at four cents the hour. Um, but it also gives you much higher uh, scale, like usually higher saving because of the scale to zero ability if you can use that. And that's it. Thanks very much, Uwe. Thank you, Simon. As always, if you want to find out more, go to cloud.ibm.com. And if you want to learn more about IBM Code Engine or indeed any other IBM Cloud services ready for certification, check out ibm.com slash training slash cloud and all of the IBM Center for Cloud Training Content.